Hi friends, I am so excited and grateful to bring you today's video. We're going to watch Cobweb and I'm going to be watching this a little bit different to everyone else. Uh, this is not available in Australia yet, but I've been lucky enough to be able to snag a copy so I can review it for you all. And I did for once wait until it was actually dark to watch this one because I'm hoping and I'm preparing myself for a jump scare fest. In this one, horror strikes when an eight-year-old boy named Peter tries to investigate the mysterious knocking noises that are coming from inside his walls. We've got Lizzie Kaplan. We've got Anthony Starr, who is New Zealander, by the way. I love him. If you guys do know, I love the boys and his character is actually my favorite. Controversial, but I just, he's just the best at being bad. So I'm just super excited to see them as a duo. I hope they're the parents. I have not seen the trailer for this one because I did not expect to see it. It's not coming out in Australia. It will probably be a release on BOD eventually. So I'm gonna let you know if it's worth the wait for one, but also if you're in America, it is coming to theaters this weekend. So I'll let you know whether it's worth your time or whether you should watch it on streaming because that's how I'm gonna watch it tonight. And this is such a weird unplanned coincidence, but earlier this week I talked about horror TV shows that are completely underrated. And I mentioned Marianne, which is a French Netflix TV show that is just creepy as hell. And it just so happens that that series was co-written and directed by Samuel Bowden, who did this film. So will it be <laughs> like that series? Probably not. That series is really creepy, but with a name like Cobweb, I can only imagine what is lurking in the walls. Um, and let's let's find out. This might be the perfect setting to watch the film at home in the middle of a storm with the creaking of the house. It's winter here, it's rainy. <laughs> I'm trying to replace the theater because of course I'd love to see this in the theater, but let's see if it's worth your time and mine. Gromit has just had his first round of chemo. Uh, so he will be sleeping next to me and I'm hoping that my screams, although I do want to scream throughout this movie, like all horror fans, I hope, I love being scared and I want to be scared. Scare me, please. Uh, hopefully I, I don't wake him though. <laughs> so there's a nice peaceful in between. Let's go check out Cobweb. I'm so excited. Okay, I've set the mood. It's storming outside. Also, did you like Gromit's bandana? It was actually given to him after completing his first round of chemo today. So now it's just us. <laughs> I'm scaring myself in the house. Let's watch Cobweb. I have so many thoughts. <laughs> that was not what I expected. And I do think that part of that is due to me not watching the trailer, <laughs> having no context around the situation. But I also think that this is a great film to talk about before you see it because it is really important to know what you're getting yourself into, believe it or not. This is not the best film to see going in blind, I don't think. Normally when I'm disappointed by a film, it's due to it having such a cool premise at the start and such a good setup to all of the characters and the idea and then they're not too sure where to go from there and how to pull it off. But this film is kind of opposite because it has such a slow and strange beginning and finally, maybe even to the second half of the second act, it finally finds its footing and becomes something actually terrifying. Normally my issue is horror movies can lose momentum or they just don't have the right consistency throughout to keep you focused and I guess draw you into the story. But this film, <laughs> It has a weird way of starting and a very interesting way of ending. So I also think that the blurb for this film does it a disservice. I would say the film is about an outcast boy who's being bullied at school and he lives with his very odd parents and here starts a very odd tale. Something like that, that gives the idea and the context that this is meant to be a twisted kind of fairy tale, a twisted nighttime story, because that is the way the whole film is presented. and. I feel like they almost didn't go all the way there with films like Coraline, which <laughs> that, is an, that is a story in itself and it's a masterpiece as well. So it's kind of hard to compare it. But if think if you're gonna do a twisted lullaby or a twisted uh, story time book, <laughs> kind of like Gretel and Hansel, you've really got to commit to the idea it is a story and maybe even start with a narration that leads you into kind of like a storybook 
uh, idea and that kind of like fantasy flow, <laughs> if that makes sense, where this, it drops you into this house and there is no setup and there's no baseline for any of the characters. It does not explain what's going on and you are following this boy, this little boy Peter, who is just in this weird dynamic with his parents. His parents are very odd and you're not really sure, again, what the baseline is. Where, <laughs> where is this coming from? Did I miss something? Um, has an event just transpired? How do we start with Peter being eight years old and all of a sudden his parents are acting like absolute Looney Tunes? <laughs> I, just, I just didn't understand that and it was just a very interesting film that didn't really have a setup. And I think that that could have been really saved with the narration at the start, like a storybook narration, because it starts very soft and it's a very quiet film. There's not a lot of dialogue throughout the entire film. The story is very simple at its core. And I think that just the first act isn't gripping enough. It was kind of boring. <laughs> I was like, where is this going? And the funny thing is it does look like Marianne uh, a lot. And I can understand why they would have gone with this director um, for this idea because that TV show in itself looks and feels, I mean, it's about a person who is an author and so is very storybook focused. So I kind of understand the path, but it just comes across as really odd without that context to it being like a bedtime story gone wrong. And that's what it really is in its core. It's a very simple story um, with very good, I will say the scares in this, I really enjoy that. There's one sequence I did shriek a little. <laughs> um, I definitely set the occasion, but I did shriek a little. And I think that this is a film that is going to be best watched in complete silence. So if you are going to the cinema, I highly, I mean, this goes for all horror movies, but I highly recommend trying to find a screening that's going to be more quiet um, because it you really need that to get immersed in the story. It's also shown with the cinematography, all of the, um, the angles and I guess because it wasn't like these really wide shots, they felt really claustrophobic and it kind of comes into the story why that might be that way. But I also think it's because it's this story from the perspective of this little boy, Peter. Um, we're seeing it, you know, down low shots. It has a lot to do with his substitute teacher and there's shots that are like undershots looking at her and it's not even from his like point of view but like it's in shots when he's not in that scene, but it feels all very childlike and um, the world is very small. We don't see these grand scales, just more so what is happening around him, which makes sense when you're a kid, everything feels so intense. The other big thing about this film that I think is a missed opportunity at least is <laughs> it is a Halloween film. It's based on a story that happens around Halloween. It leads up to Halloween and it has a lot of iconic Halloween imagery. It's all about pumpkins. Uh, it's very weird that they have released this now unless it's to get people into the mood. And I actually think that this film might be better suited to waiting, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but waiting till it comes out and watching it or even just re-watching it, if you do wanna go see it at the cinema, at home, leading up to Halloween because like I said, the first act is not strong, but the second and third act, it really comes into itself. It's a very short film. I think before the credits, it's like one hour and 23 minutes or something like that. So it does feel like a medium kind of movie, almost like a, a part of like an anthology film because it's so simple, the storyline, and they've just packed out the front. So I think this could really work hyping you up into the mood of Halloween. But then it's also got this weird balance of being really dry with the beginning and then some of the aspects like the teacher which I don't even think she needed to really be in there. But a lot of the character things they try and fill the film out with feel quite dry. And then it's really juxtaposed with these insane, terrifying moments. And I will say, whatever's going on in those walls, I'm not going to say, but... I think it's really scary. I think they did a really good job with that. So I think that this film could have been absolutely like masterful if they had just tweaked a couple of things. So it's really interesting. <laughs> it's a really interesting film, but I would, I still would highly recommend it to you. I especially think if you don't go check out this one in the cinema, I know there's a lot going on in the cinema right now, wait and wait for this one to come out on VOD or DVD, whatever that's gonna come out on. Get your popcorn, get a bunch of friends together and, and actually watch this for a Halloween party night. Um, one where you're sitting with friends who actually take these kinds of movies seriously. I think 
it has some really good scares and some really good atmosphere. It's all cold and quiet and creaky. It's perfect for a stormy night, but I just don't think it's as theatrical as I hoped it would be. And I don't know if it's this like self-sabotage because it's from a child's perspective that it all seems just a little bit too straightforward and not maybe not too straightforward but too um the cinematography and it seems too small and not grand enough and not theatrical enough but it did seem very simple but what they have in terms of scares I think they did a solid with so this is gonna be a really weird one for me to score I wanted to give it a high score because I thought that the scares and just some moments of it were so great but I balancing it out it is more of like a six out of ten uh for personal score but for scare I actually think it's quite high I would probably give it like a seven or maybe even an eight I'll, I'll say seven but it was quite scary I don't know if I psyched myself up but it was quite scary and um jump scare totally and it's not really like dread and fear but it's like that childhood scare if you're scared of you know that bump in the night that scare in the dark I if those kinds of movies work and they really like stay in your subconscious this one is gonna it's gonna get you, I think, personally. I think what they did with the, whatever was happening in the walls was quite good. And the I, the way that they reveal um, or don't reveal is is really masterful. And I, I think that it deserves a lot of praise for that. But yeah, there's definitely gaps in between and it doesn't feel like it should be a full movie. It feels like it could have been like a her American Horror Stories, you know, like an anthology movie in like a bigger film or like part of a series. Um, or Masters of Horror or something like that. It just doesn't feel like it's strong enough to stand on its own. And even the characters weren't strong enough. None of them were strong enough to stand on their own, really. They needed this whole story to tie them in. Um, and there's not really much more to it. But if you're looking for an easy film, this is definitely it. Originality, though, I'm going to have to give it like a like a three. Like, it's not very original at all. Will you be checking out Cobweb? This is a slow, starting off slow, soft and quiet film that needs a lot of love and gentle care at the start but I promise if you hold on and really do hold on till the end you will be rewarded for your patience um, and hopefully you'll get a scare or two like I did. Let me know your thoughts down below and let me know your score I'd love to hear it and thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky and don't talk to anything that may be living in your